Hey, Mike here at Canadian Musician, and crowded around me is Jason Hasty and the Alibi. How are you guys doing today? Hey, Great. Yeah. <laughs> Since uh, there's a whole gang of us here, I may as well uh, start with some just quick introductions. Obviously, Jason Hasty here. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, Joel Fraser. Ray Bandman. And Kyle Kabilka. Right on. And. Uh, EP Turning Point is now out, and well, I kind of want to start with that, because it's been about a year since uh, Turning Point dropped and went to number one on iTunes Canada's country charts, and, but with that, since it's been a year, are you guys currently working on new stuff? Is there a full length or another EP coming up? Yeah, we are working on something new. We were, just got back from Nashville, actually. I think it was last week. Uh, we were down there for a couple of weeks. <laughs> it's hard to keep track. <laughs> uh, we were down there for a couple of weeks uh, working on the first three so songs of our next album. So uh, not sure if it's going to be an EP or full length yet, um, but definitely an EP for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, since you guys were down in Nashville, and it's not your first time in Nashville, uh, I believe, and Really, for obvious reasons, every country singer I talk to, they head down to Nashville. It's obvious why it's the epicenter of country music. But uh, is there something that Nashville provides, I guess, other than just connections? Is there a vibe or, uh, I guess, something more to it artistically that you can't get outside of the epicenter of Nashville? Uh, definitely a vibe. You know, it's cool. Once you, you touch down and the first time, these guys, it was their first time last year, and uh, you just feel it in the air. You know, we went to... Uh, uh, club or a uh, pub or whatever as soon as we touched down last year and you can just sense that there's music in the air and you know and it does bring a lot of people together uh, from producers you know to the ev players to everybody so you've got the contingent of everybody in in one city which is really really cool yeah. And uh, you grew up in a very small town, Saskatchewan. <laughs> I believe, <laughs> uh, honestly, the name's escaping me. I know it's like a fewer than 100 people. If I Verse, Verse, Saskatchewan, 68 people. <laughs> no, down, when you know it down to the number, you know it's a, it's a small town. <laughs> and, uh, but with that, like country music, it's, it's a soundtrack to small town living. Uh, and, but also country music can be very American-centric for obvious reasons. Is it ever, I don't want to say a concern to you, but is it ever a conscious thing to you to bring a Canadian element into it or is country music country music regardless of where it comes from? Uh, I think the country music is country music regardless. Uh, I've traveled down to Australia a bit too and country music there is is similar to you know what it's like in in Canada I think the sounds are a little bit different you know country music is big I think it's in Germany and it's a little bit older sounding in Germany or more traditional sounding whereas in North America I think we've got kind of a, a more modern sounding country so that that would be the only difference I think and uh, with your band here the alibi and when I was researching you guys, I believe I saw you mention previously that you guys come from a more rock-oriented background, whereas you come from a more traditionally country background. I guess for you then, Jason, and maybe also your the I guess call cross-pollinated yeah. influence. Yeah. But I guess what does their rock background bring to you as a country artist? Uh, well, I think it brings a modernism of of country to it for sure. Uh, I like a lot of 80s tunes and you know those those are <laughs> rock tunes right that are now almost country yeah. tunes and uh you know for us i think the energy on stage definitely uh from these guys it's awesome um you know you see a lot of country bands or the traditional thing in country is to just kind of stand there and we really do like to rock it out on stage so nice yeah. and I guess then for you guys, the kind of throw the reverse question, if you guys are coming from a rock background, <laughs> you know, working with a country artist, has that, I guess, did you have to take a different approach to it than you had previously? Absolutely. It was so <laughs> weird at first. I didn't, I didn't even know how to handle it at first. I was like, how do I make it sound like that? Yeah. <laughs> but it was really cool. It really kind of, I don't know, diversified my playing and made it a lot more versatile. And yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, really loving it. Oh, and country crowds, yeah, country. they party. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely, we definitely play hard, harder than a lot of people do. Yeah. But it's makes it way better on stage for sure. Yeah, for everyone. Yeah. Nice. And uh, and obviously with you as Ben, you're previously a solo artist and also part of a duo. So you've kind of seen every configuration <laughs> yeah. of a band almost. Yeah. Uh, is there? Do you approach? 
uh, both songwriting, but also performance. Obviously, performance is going to be different. But when you're writing solo, writing for a duo, or writing for a band, is it any different? Is there any difference in it for you? Uh, definitely, I think so. Um, for us as the band, like we like to kind of rock out. So it, it's you know that kind of music. Um, not all. It doesn't all have to be party type music, but it definitely has a different element than when I was solo or a duo because I was part of a male female duo. So that had that had a, a very different element to it. But yeah, for sure. And uh, I, you know, I there's the much publicized story about uh, giving you and your wife giving away your house to a you know to the needy couple. I, I didn't want to hark on it too much in this interview because it has been so well publicized and for good reasons. It was an amazing thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but. I guess from a career perspective, and obviously this isn't why you did it, and, uh, and it isn't the most rewarding part, but it did have the added, you know, positive side effect of bringing in a lot of publicity. Like, has there been any long-term, uh, I guess has it changed anything long-term for career-wise for you at all? Long-term, I'm not sure. Um, it definitely has helped with the awareness and, you know, and I guess with social media and having something go viral it definitely kind of you know expands your audience so I think maybe long term as that continues to evolve that'll happen in just naturally in that way but uh, yeah you know it's it we actually hope that more people do that with their houses too so um, you know who knows what the future holds as far as us even running into uh, other people who have done the same kind of thing and you know like I always say with my music, I hope that my music touches people. And, mm -hmm. and that was something that giving away our house really, you know, obviously touched a lot of people. And we thought that was very cool. Yeah. And uh, one of the surprising things when I was kind of researching your background a bit is that you'd left music as a profession for a little bit and it got, it got, an, accounting, <laughs> <laughs> got an accounting degree. <laughs> 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 but, but you, uh, from the sounds of it, it looks like you had like a well-established career in accounting with a major firm in Calgary, and then just abandoned that to go back to music, which is a risky endeavor. Let's face it, the music industry isn't the most forgiving. <laughs> <laughs> so why that decision? Uh, I guess, why the decision? And are you happy you made it? I would. Yeah, well, m music has always been my passion. So uh, as an accountant, that's a good career. And I have that, so it's always good to fall back on that. Um, but definitely the drive for music, I've had the passion since I was so young and, you know, it eventually just had to happen, I think. And to wrap up, you guys said you uh, started to work on the follow-up album. Uh, I guess, is there a timeline for the recording when it'll be finished, when people can expect to hear new music? Right now we're targeting August, so hopefully we keep on track with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fantastic. So once again, uh, Jason Hasty and the Alibi, thanks a lot for joining me, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks. Appreciate thanks. it. Thanks.